I am greeting you from Berlin, Germany. Another great day outside today, as most days now that autumn is here and winter is slowly coming. Um, I am a knitter, um, a sewer, not so much garments, although I would love to start sewing some garments. I need to make time. I almost said I need to find time, but there's always time, so I need to make time for some garment sewing. Um, I hand dye yarn, and I create really fun kits for a homespun house shop, which is my online shop. So, um, today, or today, this week in general has been really busy. Um, we have had a very fun week. Um, I'll talk about all of that in the end and even show some footage because I know you guys really like those after um, videos. We went to a really fun park and we celebrated Adri's fourth birthday. So I will talk about all of those fun things in the end. But I've been doing a bit of knitting. Um, I have a pattern called the foraging mittens pattern. And this is just a really in my opinion, beautiful, simple, lightweight, yet very, very warm mitten. So I was knitting these for my mom out of my Pygmy Puff colorway, which is a Harry Potter reference, and I have yet to design a Pygmy Puff. I need to do it. Um, so the thumbs are finished. The, all of the ends just need to be woven in, and they need to be blocked. So let me put these on. So they have a really, really nice long cuff. And um, I told you guys that I am toying with the idea of making a child's pattern. Um, and I love a long cuff. I really, really love a long cuff. It's important to me because just when you're getting cold, and especially this year we're going to um, Wisconsin, and my mom lives in Wisconsin. Both of my parents live in Wisconsin. And I know it's important to have the cuff that she can tuck into her jacket. So this is the front piece, the way that the front looks. It's just a really pretty open lace, lace work. Um, and they're really warm. These, this is knit out of BFL. Um, and it's just such a fun knit. I really, really enjoy it. I do have plans to make a child's version of the foraging mittens, just because I love them and I really want to pair for Edoti. And I think that a lot of people uh, would enjoy just having some pretty mittens for their little girls or little boys. So here's the first one. Um, here's the second one. And I am, they look hilarious when they're not blocked. They look like really sad bunnies or something. And I feel like mittens always look really awkward because the hand looks so long, but I promise you it's not. It just goes, it's just this much longer than my hand. And you need that little bit of breathing room. Otherwise, your hands are just really tight in the mitten. So um, more people have been, have been knitting up this pattern, and that's really exciting. But So my mom's foraging mittens are basically finished. Like I said, the ends just need to be woven in, and um, they just need to be blocked then. And I love this Pygmy Puff colorway. It's... One that my mom dyed, and then I kind of wanted to recreate. I changed it a little bit, uh, and I decided to name it Pygmy Puff because they definitely look like little Pygmy Puffs from Harry Potter. The color just completely reminded me of it. And it's so exciting because I now have two Harry Potter yarns in my shop. I've had a lot of people ask me to do a Harry Potter yarn club, which I probably will do sometime in the future. Um, yeah. So because my first pair of foraging mittens is finished, not my first pair, but you know what I mean, uh, I cast on the pair for my grandma. So this is some yarn that I dyed quite a while ago. I have both of these in the same bag. This is a knit and stitch bits bag. I love this bag, and I have a really, really, one of my favorite pins that my Grandma Sue made for me. I decided to put it on this bag just because I thought that the colors went really, really nicely together. So um, yeah, I have them in my little bobbins, 
DPN holders, which I love. Um, I really love the muted tones of these. I have two of them, and they're both the same, the same, um, the same fabric, just different colorways. So I'm knitting these my first time using the Knit Pro Zing needles. I love that they're pink. Um, it's just this size, which is the 2.5, or wait, these are the two millimeter needles. Um, these ones are pink, and I'm liking them. They are almost completely blunt. It's a really, really strange tip to the needle, and I thought that I would not like knitting them as much as the carbons. I, I haven't knit with them enough to say whether I like them as much or not. I'm pretty sure I like the carbons better. These ones are definitely fun. Um, I feel like they're the same sort of weight. And they uh, make the same noise as the carbons, that little clicky noise, which a lot of you informed me that you guys like as well. <laughs> so I'm not the only one. I knew that though. I knew that a lot of people love needle clickage. But, um, yeah, so I'm past the cuff. I knit another long cuff. And um, yeah, now I've done the, the increases. I put the little scrap yarn for, um, for the thumb, and now I'm starting to decrease again. Um, and I'm just having fun. I cannot wait until I'm at the part where I'm just zooming along and just knitting in pattern and not doing any increases or decreases. That's always... It's only like this much of the mitten that you're really paying a lot of, not even a lot of attention to, but that you have to pay some sort of attention to. So I like knitting this. I'm knitting it out of 100% um, merino, I think, or maybe it's 95% merino, 5% nylon. I think that's what it is. It's a base that I never used in the shop. It's just a yarn that I dyed quite a while ago it's um, browns and yellows and lots of different shades of greens and blues and purples. But I'm thinking it's maybe not green enough for my grandma. So I'm thinking about maybe over dyeing this in a bit of sort of like a pine green, I'm thinking. Just so that it's a little bit more green. I think that will, will do nicely. Grandma, if you like it, let me know. <laughs> um, I think it's really beautiful. I think the colors on this are very pretty. But like I said, I don't know if it's green enough for, for my Grandma Sue. But it's pretty. The yarn feels very warm. Um, yeah, really, really, really warm. I'm knitting these a little bit bigger than my mom's because I know my mom and I have very small hands. So I'm knitting these, and I know that my grandma's hands are a little bit larger. She doesn't have big hands either, but her hands are larger than my mom and, and my hands. So these are really flying along. They're zinging along, and um, I'm enjoying knitting them a lot. They're a lot of fun. I have never knit gloves before. And Andre from Andre Sue Knits, or Andy, I guess, from, from Andre Sue Knits, she posted a picture on Instagram of um, her little glove and mitten collection. And Andy, I don't even know if you watch this, but I was so impressed by the, the photograph of your gloves. They looked store-bought. And I mean that in a good way. They looked really, really well done. And I thought, I can't wear gloves just because my fingers get way too cold. Um, but I'm, I don't think I would ever knit them, but I thought that they just looked really, really nice. I need the warmth of my fingers from mittens. I don't know. I couldn't, I just, for those of you, I want to know, what do you guys prefer, mittens or gloves? Um, if you had to choose. I will be shocked by the people who choose gloves. And why? Why do you choose gloves? I know because you can move your fingers around easier. Um, which I can understand if you need to work to wear gloves. <laughs> but as far as like everyday movage and going for walks and stuff, I don't know. So the next thing that I've been working on is really sad. It's so sad. 
So, I, as you guys know, was knitting AOD this really, really cute hat out of my pressed flowers, um, uh, Dale Aaron, uh, yeah, Dale Aaron weight yarn. And I was just talking about how much I loved it and how fun the base was to knit up, and um, it was just perfect. Well, the hat is lost. <laughs> so then I found in my stash another skein of hand dyed yarn. Um, this is like the hat that doesn't want to be, I think. So I found this yarn from Cherry Tree Hill, which is a favorite, a yarn that I completely love. And it's 50-50 merino silk, so this little girl is very special. That she has lost a hat, which I don't even want to talk about. <laughs> it's okay. That's what you expect when you knit little kids things. Um, and Robert said the same. He was like, you can't, you can't make her things and think about her losing them. You make them with love and you give them to her with love. And if she loses them, she loses them. And that's just the way that it is. And I completely agree. Um, you can always knit more. There will never be a lack of yarn. So then um, I found this Cherry Tree Hill yarn. I don't know where the tag is, but anyway, it's Cherry Tree Hill, like I said, 50-50, and I knit another one. This one is a chunky. It's obviously bigger than the Erin weight yarn. And so I cast on, oh my goodness, I think I cast on 10 fewer stitches. And I didn't want to bind it off um, because it was too because I, I wanted to wait and make sure that it would fit her because I knit this in the evening and then when she woke up I said yay let's try on your hat so excited you can maybe wear the hat tomorrow and she tried it on and I would say it was 10 stitches too big maybe so I think it was maybe I don't know six centimeters too big I would say um, a little over two inches which is a lot. It's just, it would definitely slide off her head. And that's why I wanted to make her a new hat. I wanted to make one because her hat that she has isn't warm enough, but because it is always sliding off of her head and I always see her little ears poking out and I just think she needs her ears covered. So this will actually be the fourth time that I knit this hat. When I knit the first one out of the pressed flowers, it was too big. Then I knit it again and it fit. Then it was lost. Then I knit this one and it's too big. And as soon as I finish this podcast, I am going to rip it out. And um, maybe this evening, probably this evening, I will recast it on. We'll see. Either that or I'll work a little bit on my, my grandma's foraging mittens. But I'm pretty sure that I should recast this on because I think she will start needing it next week. Um, it's been about anywhere between 10 to 15 degrees Celsius here the past week, so it hasn't been so freezing that she absolutely needs a winter cap. Um, she had her, she had her machosa on yesterday, and we played at the park for a bit after Kita, and she was sweating like a beast so I took those off and this hat would have been just too warm for her she had a really really fine knit hat on not one that I made um so yeah I'm feeling like I should finish this if I made it again and it doesn't fit that will really stink but I'm gonna rip it out and knit it again so I hope that, when, what will this be, the fourth time that I knit it, I think I said? I hope that the fourth time is a charm. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. So it's so funny, I forgot that I even had this bag. This is like, I think the first project bag that I ever made um, and kept. <laughs> I have some, I have, we still have the first project bags that I made and I should show you guys these sometime because they are so, funny. They are, they don't even look like a project bag. They are the most awkward shape. They are just really hilarious. Ada uses them for playing. One of them, she has a wooden memory game. Excuse me. She has a wooden memory game and she keeps all of the pieces in one of them. And then in the other one, 
I think she just puts random things in. I have no idea. But yeah, so I was looking for a bag to put this in and I found this pretty one. This is a pretty fabric that my grandma gave me a long time ago. Um, I made this for Christmas years ago. I think two, three years ago. Um, and then I just put these pretty big jingle bells on there and I really like the drawstring bag. I've never made them for my shop. I don't know if I will. Um, but they're fun. It's, it's definitely kind of nice just to have that completely open top to dig into. I like zippered bags too, but maybe just because I'm always around zippered bags, my one drawstring bag is a little bit exciting. So the next thing that I started to work on, because I thought, okay, this is about time that you get working on this, um, was my, I don't even remember what this pattern is. Pattern by Martina Bain. I knit a couple of rows on this. Where's my progress keeper? Um, I need a couple of rows on this and I decided, I, th I thought I needed to knit on this because Ruby is getting to the age where this, she kind of needs to use it. So I'm knitting this out of, um, what am I knitting it out of? Volmeise. And I, I'm kind of feeling like ripping it out. I'm honestly thinking about just taking out the needles and not knitting it anymore. I feel like I don't have time to knit on this anymore. There, are, Okay, it's not that I don't have time, it's that I don't want to make time to knit on it. Um, I'm not really, it's just been in hibernation for so long, I feel like. And I have a lot of other projects that I'm enjoying knitting on, that I want to knit on. I want to obviously finish Robert's shawl for Christmas. I didn't knit on it at all this week. Um, I want to finish that for Christmas. I want to finish my grandma's foraging mittens. Those are the two main things that I need to finish this year. Um, and I really want to, of course, finish some of my designs. I have a little Christmas design that I kind of would like to pop up um, soon because Christmas is coming so quickly. Uh, I can't believe we're going to be in America in six weeks. Insane. So um, I don't know. I'm really just thinking about knitting, ripping this out. I have, I, I want to say this before I forget, I have been kind of going through all of my craft stuff and I've made another little box of stuff, well it's kind of a big box, that I want to give away. So I will be making a separate video sometime next week, I would say Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, I'm guessing more so Tuesday or Wednesday, that I will be popping up um, on iTunes and YouTube just of me kind of showing stuff that I'm giving away for free. So all you have to do is just pay for the shipping, watch the video if there's anything that you want, um, send me a PM on Ravelry, and uh, yeah, I think that shipping would just be like six euro for the shipping, and that's tracked. So, um, so yeah, just a heads up that I will be having a video Tuesday or Wednesday of some fiber and some yarn and nothing really exciting. It's mostly just um, obviously things that I'm not going to use anymore. So um, yeah, just keep an eye out for it. As soon as everything's gone, I will delete the video and it will be finished. But yes, so... This could possibly be one of the skeins that's in there. We'll see if I have time to to rip it out. <laughs> so crazy when you when you have ideas for projects and you want to work on them and you get excited about them and you are excited about them and then you just you lose your lust, your excitement for for knitting on them, it's really insane. 
That's how I feel about my Cozy Memories blanket. I think in the last podcast, I talked about um, that I was finished. And I don't even remember where I left off on that. If I said that I was completely finished or if I was contemplating being finished. Uh, I know that I said that I want to, when I'm finally finished, do a border, uh, just a garter stitch log cabin style border on the blanket. Um, I have two fun blankets here. Here I have my blanket of awesomeness, spiral blanket of awesomeness. I just like to keep that on the back of the chair so that I can put it on my neck if I need to. But um, as far as my Cozy Memories blanket goes, like I said, I keep going back and forth with this. I would say every time that I think about it. And I was talking to Robert about it. We were looking through some of my pole work yarns about, um, first I was choosing what color that I wanted to do the border in. And in the end, we finally chose a mossy green colorway. And then as I was thinking about caking it up, I thought, why do I really need to, and Pop Robert said, do you really need to put a border on it? And I said, not really, you know, I could just weave in all of the ends just so that it's a clean blanket and that we can use it. I just kind of feel like I have way too many projects on the needles right now that I just kind of want to clean them up. Um, I don't know if my life is feeling cluttered or why I'm feeling like I need to, to do that, but um, it totally makes sense that I can just weave in the ends, hang it over the sofa for us to use when we, when we want, and then... When I do want to knit a square on it, to you know, go ahead and pick it up and start knitting squares on it. It's funny because as I'm talking about it right now, I'm thinking about all the minis that I have and thinking, I kind of would like to wrap that on my lap and start knitting a row on it. And when I watched Danny from the Little Bobbins podcast, she said the same thing, that she really wants to start knitting a new one with a little bit smaller squares. And it's the same with me. I, I wish I would have knit it at a little bit tighter gauge. Um, I think I'm using a three millimeter needle. I'm almost positive. And I wish I would have used a 2.5 millimeter needle. Um, I'm happy with the stitch count. I know with the 2.5 it would have been smaller. Um, but, ah, someone asked me and I told them and I said that I would talk about this. A couple of people on Instagram, and I've had a lot of people in general, uh, always asking how I'm doing my blankets. So I cast on um, 40 stitches for each square. I cast on 40 stitches, and um, I obviously knit 18. This is how I do mine. I knit 18, I knit two together, I knit, um, I slip slip knit, and then I or no, I knit 18, I slip slip knit, I knit two together, and then I knit 18 again. And then you obviously just keep decreasing. Knit 17, slip slip knit, so on and so forth. On the right side is where I'm always decreasing. Um, just to briefly say that. And um, so, yeah. I would love to start another one. I don't think, I think that I just need to keep working on this one. I think I just need to keep making it bigger. I need to just keep working one row at a time. Um, and why do I need to close it off and put that border on? There really is no reason that I need to do that. I've just been kind of telling myself, Molly, you don't need to put those borders on it. You can just let it be open and free. <laughs> I know this probably sounds ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, I think... There will be times when I really want to work on it and will really, really enjoy working on it. So I just need to weave the ends in and it's so funny. It's so funny because I can see working on this sometime this month. I can see it being a project also that I take with me to America because it's easy. You just take a lot of mini skeins and you can just work on it. Maybe it will be the only project that I take there. Actually, I need something portable, too. But, but, yeah. It's so funny the way that we think that we're finished with something, especially a big project, and then we just... It's kind of one of those comfort knits that we kind of need. <laughs> so, um, 
yeah. This is the moss colorway that I thought about getting the border with. Um, I've been dying a lot of uh, semi-solid tonal colorways, which I'll show you guys a little bit later. Um, is there something else? Yeah. I have been working a little bit on some socks. This is a, oh, it's the wrong project bag. This is a sock project that I started forever ago, and it was a design that I was doing, but I'm not going to write up this design. Um, there's no point. So, uh, I'm knitting this out of O Loops. I really, really like this, this sock base. It's O Loops Antique Lace, and this is the 8020 Gold Sock, 80 Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. And this sock base is really soft and nice. And I love this colorway. It's really, really pretty. So just pretty cables all around with one of my favorite stitch markers. Little heart. I just knit one and a half cables on here, so didn't do a lot. I just just wanted to work on a sock and wanted to do a little bit of cableage because Kristen and um, I know Lara are doing cables and yeah. In here I have a really fun little pin that Robert found on the, the train one afternoon. Very cute of a girl um, just sitting in her chair reading a book. It's kind of vintagey looking. I like it. Then I have a random plastic bag. No idea. So I've been working on, you know, a little bit of stuff here and there. I'm still uh, wondering what to knit with this. I showed you guys this last, or I didn't show it to you. I wanted to bring it on today so that you guys could picture the yarn a little bit more. I wanted to know what I should knit with this 65% wool, 35% alpaca. It is not super wash. It is a, I don't think it is. It kind of feels like it though, but it doesn't say super wash. So I don't think it is. It's from Drops. Um, I bought it quite a while ago, and um, I've gotten a couple of suggestions. There's one suggestion that I loved. I can't even remember what the sweater is called, but um, I think this will be cast on soon. I'm a little bit scared to cast it on because, like I said, I have a lot of stuff going on, but I just, I want to be knitting more sweaters. I wear my featherweights all the time. I have noticed that I am wearing them every single day. Um, and I would really like to have a pullover. I want a pullover to put on. So I'm pretty sure that this will be knit into some sort of pullover. And I'm really excited to knit something on such a heavyweight yarn and to see it growing so fast because knitting that hat for 8OD out of the chunky yarn and on size five millimeter needles is just it is day and night. It is such a difference to be knitting something on such so much of a larger scale. And I think it will be fun. I noticed that those needles hurt my hands a little bit when I'm knitting on the, the larger needles, but I think I think I'll get used to it. I think my hands just it's a different position, you know, you have to hold your fingers different. So uh, I think it will be fun. So if if anyone has any more ideas, I want something a little bit oversized. I don't want it to be like a fitted pullover. I really like oversized. I think I think it looks really pretty. Um, and yeah, something with a little bit of cables could be okay. I would be fine with a little bit of color work around the yoke. Um, yeah. So the next thing that I wanted to do again is answer some of your questions and now is the time to ask. So let's see what people ask. Hey Molly, I'd love to hear about your dyeing adventures. What dye methods and what dyes do you use? Did you try out different methods before you settled on the ones you use now? Um, what were the craziest questions you had about dyeing and which answer surprised you the most? I'd love to hear it. Love, Lisbeth. Uh, Lisbeth? I... I honestly started dying in the craziest way. Not even the craziest way, I wouldn't say. 
I didn't really know anything about dyeing. I didn't really watch any tutorials. I talked with Kristen a bit from Yarngasm, from Full and Vine Yarns. And she kind of, you know, gave me tips on things that I should have around for dyeing. Um, but really just told me, you know, experiment yourself and see, you know, what you like and, and things like that. So I hopped right into dyeing without really, without reading anything. It was a night that my mom was here. We dyed, she dyed the Pygmy Puff colorway and I dyed a couple of other colorways. I dyed, I think, Polaroid and Aurelia and I think those are the two that I dyed that evening. And the first whole rounds of yarn that I dyed aren't the best. They're not my favorite but I just tried it. Like, I can't even tell you what methods that I used. I used kettle dyeing. I, um, kettle dyeing. That's what I used the first time that I, that I started to dye. And then I did a lot of speckling. Um, I guess for me, it's a really hard question to answer because I don't really know a lot about technically dyeing. I, I know obviously how you have to dye and I know about safety precautions and things like that. But as far as dyeing, I feel like it's with the same as all art. It's the same as knitting, it's the same as weaving, it's the same as painting especially. You kind of have your own techniques and you have the way that you do certain things and I don't think that anyone dyes the same way. I don't think you splatter your dye the same way. I don't think you add your water the same. Every single thing is completely, you know, um, individual and um, It's really hard to say. It's just something that you have to experiment with. You have to know that you know about safety precautions, like always wear a mask. That is so important. You can get so sick. It can be very um, dangerous to you and your health to be breathing in any sort of um, powder dyes, especially acidic dyes. So um, wearing gloves and just keeping yourself um, Safe, basically. So how do you plan on introducing your daughters to knitting and other handcrafts? The Lady Katie 19X asks me that. Well, Elodie, she loves to see me knit. She wants to learn how to knit. She likes to wrap yarn around the needles. She's done a little bit of drop spindling quite a while ago. Um, and She's helped me sew a pillow before, just kind of helped her hands have guided me. Um, I really, I think I would like to start her sewing first. I think that's one of the first things that I would like to do with her is sewing, maybe making some pillows, um, maybe a little quilt I would really like to introduce her with. Um, I definitely want to start it soon. I think People say that when your child is old enough to read or tie their shoes, uh, then it's fine for them to learn how to knit. Now I know that there are children in specific places who learn when they're very, very, very little. But I think for the, the pace of our family and the quickness of life, um, for us anyway, I don't think that knitting or sewing at too young of an age is something that I would do. I think now that Edodie's four, I definitely think that she could learn to sew. I definitely think that we can, I can help her with cutting things out. She's pretty good at cutting on the line and things like that. But I would love to get her sewing little things. I think a little quilt for her doll would be such a fun project to do together. So that's definitely something that I can see happening in the year is a quilt from Edodie. Uh, a little dolly quilt or a lap quilt. I think would be so much fun to do together. Um, so somebody says, Hi Molly, your finished objects always look so beautifully neat. I'd like to know, do you have any special techniques for finishing your projects, especially for weaving and ends? I'm always afraid of my yarn ends coming undone at the same time, still, still struggle to make them blend into my knitting nicely. Do you use different methods depending upon the materials that you use? And do you weave in the ends before or after blocking? I'm very interested. And that's from Yudipa. Um, or Judipa. 
So, thank you. That's very, very nice. I weave in my ends before I block. I don't trim the ends until after I'm finished blocking. It's so funny. I, I weave in my ends the same exact way that my grandma does, for the most part. I can remember when I first started knitting, I thought I ran into the same problem. I thought, oh my god, where do I stick these ends and how do I make it so that it looks nice? Especially on things like a shawl and, you know, things where you can kind of see both sides. But I always weave them in nicely, even if it were to be a sweater where it would always kind of be hugged to the body. Um, it's hard to say. Maybe, maybe on the next podcast I can show you, or I could even do a little tutorial. Maybe that's something that I can can do for for next week. That would be really fun. I've had a lot of people, and I know I feel like a lot of podcasters have been um, hearing from the viewers that they want more tutorials. So, if there are any tutorials that you guys want to see, I would love to to try to make some time to do that for you guys. So. Um, I will make it my goal this next week to film a little tutorial on how I weave in ends. It may not be the perfect way, um, but it's just just the way that I do it, just the way that my grandma Sue taught me. So um, it would be really fun to film a video of her doing it, but she's all the way in America, so that would be kind of impossible. But but yeah, so um, I guess that one's a little bit hard to explain. Um, all right, that seems good. I can talk about next week. I'll I'll have some some questions planned in advance. Somebody asks actually actually how long have you been knitting? Who taught you to knit? Uh, my grandma Sue taught me to knit a long long time ago. I think I talk about this maybe definitely in one of the beginning podcasts. I'm sure that I talk about it. Um, I have been knitting for a really long time. I would say 21 years or so. 22. A real, quite a while. My favorite things to knit are... It really depends. I always like knitting shawls. I feel like it's something that I really enjoy. I go through phases of knitting on socks. There are times when that's all that I want to knit on, and then there are times when, like right now, I'm not really knitting on any socks. Um, I just like to knit with yarn that I love, and I think that's the most important thing. I can't really say what I like to knit. I just like to knit with yarn that I love, and when something hits me, it hits me, and that's what I want to knit. And uh, I don't know, I guess that's just how it happens. How does it happen for you guys? Do you have projects that you love to knit or is it just kind of like you love everything? <laughs> you love all your projects. There isn't one that you tend to always, you know, be working on. I guess I would say right now for me it's kind of shawls. You could say that's kind of, I always have a shawl project on the needles. I would love for it to be sweaters. Kristen, I too, that's my goal. So, um, what else? I have a lot of stuff in the shop. I did a really, really fun, um, I've been doing a lot of fun projects for kits. My last kit was this one, this beautiful Christmas in the forest. And this came with my um, Festival of Lights yarn and then some stitch markers. So I have a couple of these bags, not as kits, that I'm putting in the shop, along with a couple that just have um, plain fabric. But all of the kits, they're already gone. I'm very sorry about that. Um, but I'm letting you guys know ahead of time that on Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to guess it will be Monday. These kits will be up in the shop. So these are really, really cute kits with vintage like glasses, and then there's a Santa Claus and Kitty Cat on, on all of them. It'll say Happy Holidays with candles and presents, and I love these. 
So this will be the next and final installment of, of the Christmas kits. And I have my leather labels now, as you guys can see. So that's really exciting. I'm so happy to finally have those. And I will be offering a lot of kits coming up after the Christmas kits. I have so many fun ones. You guys are going to be so excited. Um, let me know if there's anything that you guys want to see to the kits in addition to bags, yarn, and stitch markers. Is there something else that you guys think, man, I would love to have this added to the kit or this added to the kit. I really want to know. So I think I forgot to say, but all of my um, Christmas kits have the little jingle bells with the um, Christmas tree. So I will be doing a lot of these three-toned kind of patchwork project bags, and those will always just have my a homespun house house as a zipper pull. So I'm just going to show you a few, not to take up too much time. Um, this one. This pretty one. This one's my favorite. I like that one a lot. Probably because of the trees. They just get to me. And then I have a lot of fun yarn. I dyed up some um, pressed flowers on my deal base. Almost all of... I'm so happy. I'm so, 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 so happy with my bases in the shop. I, I cannot even tell you guys how much I love these. So this is 100% 19 micron merino. So this is pressed flowers. I have um, pygmy puff whoops, on Dale. I have it on my Bakken. Bakken base is now my, um, my, the name of my um, cashmere base. So it's 75% superwash merino, 25% cashmere, and 5% nylon. Uh, I, of course, have blush. I'm not going to show you guys everything because it will take too long. I have blush on both bases. I have foliage. I just have that on Dale. I have birthday cake. I have that on Dale and um, Bakken. I have, I want to show you guys the um, semi-solids that I started to dye. So I started to dye this beautiful color called Barley. And I just think that these are really perfect for pairing with, um, with yarns. You know, if you want to knit a shawl, I know Stephen West has his mystery knit along starting today, which I'm so sad not to be a part of, but I know I don't, I can't make time for it. So I had to turn it down. So I have barley and I have these on Polworth, um, Bakken. I haven't named my Polworth base yet. So right now it's Polworth. Polworth, I have them on Bakken and then I'm showing them to you on Dale. This is Peony. I have moss. This one's my favorite. Dewdrop. I also love peony too. I like all of them. <laughs> They're all really kind of um, heathery. They're really, really just pretty subtle, not like in your face sorts of colors. Um, if they're on the cashmere base, they'll be a little bit more vibrant. And then I have forgotten, where is it? I can't find it. But anyway, I also have a bit of the Half Blood prints on Dale fingering. Um, here is forgotten. It's a purpley, mauvey, gray. Um, yeah. So, 
Head on over to the shop if you're interested in any of those, plus more. There's Puddle Jumper, You Cook All Sing, lots of, lots of really fun combinations that you can do with that. There's also still some Festival of Lights in there. Um, yeah. So I want to, before I forget, um, yet last week I hosted a giveaway, Nicole and I from Hugh Loco hosted a giveaway for some yarn and a pattern. And the winner was Kelly Ann, and she dressed up as, her, her favorite thing that she dressed up for Halloween was Wonder Woman. She said that her mom wasn't super crafty and didn't make a lot of Halloween costumes, so they always bought box store Halloween costumes, which is totally okay too. Not everyone's, my mom certainly didn't make my Halloween costumes. I don't even know what I could say my favorite Halloween costume was. It was probably a princess that my best friend Katie, her mom, sewed for us the costume, which is just funny. But um, yeah, so congratulations. Write me a message on Ravelry and I will send that out to you. The, the yarn and Nicole will, will send you the pattern. So the past week was really, really nice. We went to um, a park that had, it was really, really neat. They had really fun rides there, but it was also an open, completely open nature park and it was huge. You could walk for hours. You could ride horses, you could walk around and there were deer and ram and sheep and um, goats and like, what else was there? Um, honestly, lots of different animals. I don't even know why I can't think. Just tons, tons of different animals that you could, you could feed and you could pet them. It wasn't like a petting zoo. Like it wasn't like each little animal was caged into an area. It was a massive piece of land where there were tons of animals freely walking around. A deer could walk and, you know, brush up against you and Iri loved it. She had so much fun. It was a really, really nice time. Um, they served German food there. The food was definitely not very good. It was seriously the worst, cheapest, most terrible German food I've ever had. <laughs> Completely processed. Um, but regardless of the food, we had a really nice time. We were there for a very long time and we just spent the day walking around, spending time with the animals, going on fun, kind of like amusement park rides. It's really cool because Aerodi is not fearful of roller coaster style rides or anything that's really fast and very high. Like we went on this one ride that was as high as a really, really tall tree and you just go back and forth backwards and forwards and back and forwards. And she wanted to go on it immediately. She wasn't scared. She just said, yeah, let's go on that. And had so much fun. She had the most insane look of fear in her face as it started to go down. <laughs> I have a video of it. It was so funny. Um, yeah, I won't share that on the podcast. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me about showing like lots more videos of my children and things like that. And there are some specific times when I will, but I don't want to make it a habit. I don't want them to be on the podcast all the time. Just, just because I don't. So, um, I'm sure you guys understand, but yeah, we had so much fun. We had a lot of fun there. And Adri's birthday was a total hit. The morning, she was so happy. She loved her gifts. She just spent the morning rocking out with her guitar and singing and wearing her cape. She had so much fun. I didn't really get any pictures or footage of her birthday. It was so funny. At the end of the night, Robert and I looked at each other and we were like, did you get a picture of her? No. Did you get a picture of her? No. We were just so busy with her birthday party and getting ready for her birthday party and it was perfect. It went perfectly. Um, I couldn't ask for anything different. So, so that was really nice. Um, we had nine, we had eight children all together. Um, we picked most of them up from the Kita without their parents, almost all of them except for one. And then they, you know, joined us afterwards and, um, we hung out and talked and danced and all of them had glow sticks. So at one point we turned off 
quite a few points. We turned off the lights and they danced and like we're listening to fun autumnal music with their glow sticks and we're dancing around. I wish I would have gotten a video of that because it was adorable and fun and cute and hearing their little voices singing these XX, XX German songs. Oh my goodness. Really, really cute. Um, there's this one autumn song that Eiruri sings so cute. My heart melts every time we listen to it in our flat. We listen to it at the party too, but, and she just sings. I can't even remember the words, but it's really cute. Um, yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Today, um, now it's Friday, and Robert's parents and his sister and her family weren't, uh, weren't able, I almost said they weren't allowed. <laughs> they weren't able to come to the party on Monday because of working, it's the beginning of the week, and they were just busy. So they'll be here today, actually very soon, I, would, I think in about a half an hour. So we'll have cake, and Robert is making dinner, which is really exciting. He's making stuffed mushrooms with um, some yummy veggies and with some TBP, which is a vegetarian substitute, or a meat substitute, not a vegetarian substitute. Uh, so it would be really, really delicious. Um, I'm very excited about that. I, I have been thinking a lot about the food that I'm eating and thinking a lot about meat and I've been reading a lot about it and um, I've decided that I'm not going to eat meat anymore. Um, it's something that I'm slowly feeling very strongly about and um, I just don't feel okay eating it anymore after learning about the very large percentage of animals who are raped and abused and killed, murdered in the process. So um, I don't have to go on about that because you guys can all make your own decisions. I'm sure I will talk about it in the future at some time um, because I think a lot of people are blind to what is going on with the food that they eat. And I think that a lot of people want to be blind because they don't want to change their eating habits. It's a really hard thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm curious what Robert's mom and his sister will think if they will even realize that, that it's not meat in the stuffed peppers. We'll tell them afterwards probably, but I'm curious if they'll say something. So yeah, I'm excited. It will be nice. We'll pick up Eiruri early from the Kita and just have a nice afternoon spending her birthday together with family. Um, tomorrow night we're having friends over, Robert's making dinner again, which is really exciting. Um, I think he's making spaghetti alla mama, which was the first meal that he ever made for me. So that would be fun. Um, and then Sunday I'm sure that we'll plan a really fun activity for the family because we like to do, you know, fun stuff together on Sundays together. Fun stuff together on Sundays together. <laughs> So yeah, it will be nice. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I can't wait to see you guys next week. I hope that you have a really nice weekend and week ahead and happy knitting. Bye. Oh